couch dogs need palaces. Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? I'm Asaf Levavi and I welcome you to lesson number six and finally understanding chords, the 10 lesson chord theory course right here on Lickin' Riff for free, of course, just like everything is on Lickin' Riff. So we've been unlocking the guitar next secrets for guitar harmony for chords and uh, not just the shapes, but going in depth about how they're built and why they look the way they do. For example, we discussed every kind of embellishment we could think of, and uh, we also started touching more complex chords. So now we're finally gonna start going all over the neck and finding chords anywhere. And for that, you need the caged method. You might've heard of it, you might have not, and you might've learned a few caged method lessons uh, here and there, but um, I'm gonna give you a couple of ways to look at it. There's the more complicated way and there's the really, really easy way. But the catch is that for the easy way to look at it, you have to know the difficult way. You'll understand better when I'm through showing you. So the caged method is named uh, the caged method because of the order of the shapes, C-A-G-E-D. <clears throat> And uh, that's exactly what's going on. It's not C, A, G, E, D. It's C, A, G, E, D. All of these were C chords. All of these shapes were the same chord, C, just with different uh, pitches and different chord voicings. And that's what the caged method is all about. It's the order of the shapes of the chord voicings. And by now you should know what chord voicings are. If you uh, are just watching this as your first lesson, I strongly suggest that you uh, go back and watch the previous lessons in this series. Otherwise, uh, the next couple of lessons won't make any sense. And um, this table right below, the uh, embellishment table, the embellishment sequence won't make any sense. Uh, this lesson will focus on the cage method. The next lesson will focus on what we can do with the cage method. And then we're going to start talking really complex chords and how to find any chord you want to find on the guitar, including making your own chords. So uh, take your time, watch the introduction and everything else I've taught you so far, then come back. This lesson won't be going anywhere. So, um, basically speaking, it's just that, the chord shapes, C-A-G-E-D. And uh, the way to find these shapes um, is this. You know the C chord, right? Let's start with C, because that's the simplest way, then I'll show you the application for any key you wanna find. C. Now take the bass note, and then bar at the same fret where that bass note was. So in C, that's the third fret, so you bar the third fret. Put an A shape on and you have C. If you want to, uh, um, you know, put my money where my mouth is, A, B flat, B, C. Okay? So uh, you can check that with any chord you want. But that's the longest and most tedious way to go about it and you can do it in real time. You won't start calculating. You need a trick. And the cage method is a trick. So, um, A, that's the second shape. So C, and you take the point where the bass note is, you bar there, and you put an A shape chord. And you have C. Now, you bar where the A shape is, and you put on the G chord head, or if you're very daring, the whole G chord shape. Okay, so, this is not very comfortable, so I'll just put this on. Okay. The main application of this is this, okay? You play the high notes usually uh, when you play the G shape. You don't play the low notes uh, unless you're in a very specific guitar arrangement uh, that requires this, okay? So um, this is the third shape. So C, A, and then you bar where the A is, you have G. Now, where the bass note is on the sixth string now, you bar over there and you put an E shape. And that's the E shape chord for C. And now for D. Um, and that's where the E shape is. And now for D. 
Um, remember the E shape uh, voicing, one, five, eight, okay? And eight is an octave above one, okay? It's the same note, so this now is your bass note on the fourth string. So this is the bass note, and you put the D shape on, okay? Two frets above it. Or another way to go about it without the bass note, you look at where your barring finger is, and you just go four frets up. So we're on eight, and eight plus four is 12, and you put a D shape on the 12th fret. And this is also C. Now, if you wanna really check out why this is C, you'll have to put the next chord on, the C shaped bar. So let's start with D, okay, a D chord. If you want to play the next chord, just bar where you're putting the chord. So you're putting the chord on two, three, and two. So just bar the second fret and put a C shape on. And you'll notice that you have exactly the same notes. Yeah, exactly the same notes. You just get an extra note. Um, actually, every time you go up the caged uh, system, you gain one or two extra notes. The rest stay the same because it's the same chord. For example, um, if we're playing this and this, all we gain is this extra note. Listen. Okay, we got an extra note, just one extra note. So um, that's the basic method. Now let's continue with D. So D, and we bar where the chord is, we put a C-shaped chord, and then we go the same way. Where the bass note is on the fifth string, we get the A shape. Then we bar where the A is, and we get the G shape. Then we bar where the bass note is on the sixth string, we get the E shape. Now, um, let's uh, discuss the easy method. Now that you understand the cage system, the shortcut is really very simple. You just search for the bass note on the fifth or the sixth string and immediately you have two shapes over there. So, um, for example, if we want uh, C sharp, then uh, our bass note is here, four on the A string. So if we bar over there, we have the A shape. And if we want the C shape, we just go four frets down and put the C shape on. Okay? Again, if we have the bass note on the fifth string, then uh, in front of it we have A, and behind it we have C. Okay, let's check it somewhere else. Uh, let's check it over here. Okay, um, the eighth fret. The eighth fret is F. So in front of it we have A, okay, or this. Uh, however it's more comfortable for you, and behind it we have C, the C shape, and this is F, and we can actually check it out. It's C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. Okay, but instead of counting, we can just take a shortcut. We find the bass note, and it's either A or C. Okay, A in front, C in the back. Same thing for the sixth string. Uh, we already checked the 8th fret, that's C, so let's go for the 6th fret. This is B flat, so in front of it you have the E shape, and behind it you have the G shape, or let's try the fuller shape, okay? And of course you can see that where I'm barring is the A shape. Just in case you want to practice seeing and visualizing the caged uh, system on your guitar neck. Now, with a little training, with just about a week of practice, you'll start seeing it everywhere. Now, um, another important application of this is um, knowing where you have shapes all over the neck in case you want to solo and add the notes of the chords to your solo. You're soloing over particular chords and you know the chords, so if you want to add harmonic notes to the solo to go very well with the chords that accompany it, then you can always visualize where the chords are. Now, uh, in the next uh, lesson, I'm going to show you how to take the caged system chords and uh, find their minor equivalents and sevens and all that, everything we discussed in the previous lessons. Um, of course, this is basic stuff, and if you've watched the previous lesson, then you know how to do it, but it always helps when somebody helps you around and... Um, shows you a few examples. So in the next lesson, we'll discuss more about the cage method. 
And remember, it's just shapes, and uh, you can always go backwards. Wherever you have a C chord shape, you can play the D shape okay, as the high notes, and that's most of the time enough when you're playing chords. Sometimes in a band, you don't want to play the whole chord. All you want to do is to play the, uh, you know, the harmony of the chord without um, dirtying the arrangements. So you don't really need to play the bass notes all the time if you have a bass player. So that's what you'll do. You, you'll play half a chord. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next lesson. In the meantime, you go practice this and I'll see you in lesson number seven. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.